What's up, I'm Alex. And today I'm talking to you about the extension systems of Strapi. This is an introduction uh, to the extension systems, which is an addition that arrived in uh, Strapi version beta. And uh, in this video, I'm gonna be mentioning how the extensions work. Specifically, we're gonna need to use what is called the extensions folder. And the structure will be extensions slash name of plugin slash name of uh, uh, subfolder and then the name of file and the name of the function. Basically it means that we're gonna be able to overwrite any function or functionality that comes from a plugin. And this is an example, so up here we have the extensions folder. It will contain a subfolder called users-permissions and then it will contain subfolders for the specific uh, subsections which I'll show you how to understand and how to use in a second. But basically by uh, adding this config and these models uh, subfolders, we can then override the specific files, such as the GWT file, the routes, or the user dot settings. In this case, the routes will actually work as additive routes, which means that the routes that you put in here in user permission config routes.json will be added or, or also they may just override the route of that you already have. In this case, we have a get slash users user that find. This will overwrite the get request on slash users. And the reason why this was done is was so that uh, we can have a policy that is called is target user logged in so that only yourself will be able to fetch your own data. And so this is the reason why this was done. And uh, it will basically overwrite the normal behavior that will come from the plugin. So uh, another example would be, again, extensions slash content manager, in this case using a controller to create a file called contentmanager.js and I'll show you how to know, how to figure out the name of the files in a second. But in this case, we're gonna override the content manager so that we can have a custom delete operation. So instead of having the default delete, it's gonna do something else. In this case, it just shows you the idea and the model, uh, but this is done so that if you need to extend it, you, you're gonna be able to know what's going on and you can do it here, for example. And uh, this is actually in another video that I already made, so there's gonna be a link somewhere uh, for you to find this extra video in case you wanna uh, do that. And uh, um, the beauty of the extension system is that uh, anytime you need to create a new functionality, in this case a find end method, you can just add it to your module.exports in your file. And uh, uh, otherwise your files will need nothing else because they're gonna either use core controllers in this case, or they're gonna have core functionality that already comes from the plugin. So they make extending your files as straightforward as just writing the name of what it, what it is that you wanna extend. And uh, that means that we need to, I need to teach you how to keep up to date with this because clearly plugins may change, files may change, but the philosophy behind it will not. And if you have any doubt on a specific file, you can just send me a message in the Q&A of the course. But that said, I'm gonna actually show you with the, the practicality of how I do it so that you can do it yourself so that you're free. So as we said, we're gonna have our extensions folder and then we're gonna find a Strapi plugin, plugin name in the repo. So I'm gonna navigate to the repo and this is the repo, github.com slash strapi slash strapi. And then we have the packages and the packages are gonna contain a lot of packages. This is, uh, this is a mono repo, which means that it contains all of the packages. And you can look around until you find the strapi-plugin section, which is here. And this strapi-plugin are the plugins for strapi. So the name will be strapi-plugin and then dash and then the name of the plugin. In this case, content-manager or content-type-builder or users-permissions. So now you know how to get the name of the plugin. Now, how do you know, for example, uh, something I mentioned in another video where the user and permissions doesn't have the updated methods that you, or rather the updated methods name that you have in the API. Well, the way you do that is you open up the user and permissions, and then you go in the controllers, and you click on user, uppercase u, user.js, and then you'll, you'll see that this method is called find here, but then if you look at the functionality of the method find in here on line 33, you'll see that the services are still called in the old way, which is fetch all. So now you know that whenever you're extending your plugin, your user plugin or your user and permission, you're gonna need to still use these old methods. So we can, for example, go to the, the services uh, folder 
and then we can look at them again in the user file and we can see what they are. In case you are unhappy with how fetch is built or maybe you want to change it to find, you could literally just copy this code and this is in the services, then we can go in uh, extensions, user and permission, create a new folder called services, create a new file called user.js and then type in just like here the module.exports in this case yeah we just need the module.exports and then curly braces and then you can type the old fetch which is the, 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 the normal way to do fetch with uh, the, the user plugin and then you can rename fetch let me just uh, make sure it's indented properly This is like the, the hardest thing, it's just going to be to to cut out the documentation, but uh, I'm going to do it because uh, it's important. There we go. Okay, and then you can just rename the fetch with find. And now you're going to have a service which is going to be called or accessed by strapi.services, square bracket, no, dot plug, strapi, it's actually going to be strapi dot plugins, square bracket, users, dash permissions, dot services, dot user, dot find. And this way you're going to be able to find a specific user. So this is uh, how to, to do it. Another example I want to give you is for the content manager, which has to do with updating values on the in the back end, in the administration panel. So I'm going to go back to the packages. First of all, how do you find it? First of all, how do you find it? You just search for strapi plugin until you find the one that is called content manager. So the name of the plugin will be content manager. And then, in case you want to overwrite how the behavior for a normal delete or a normal entry, so that maybe you, you send uh, some data to a server or you do something else, you can go into controllers. And then you're going to find the name of the file. In this case, you have three components, content manager, and type and content types. And you can look at them if you're interested. But I can assure you that the controller that we care about is the content manager.js. And then you'll be able to find the, uh, the operation for finding, finding one, count, and the create. And so you could, for example, override the create. And you will start by just copying it because it's a great idea to start from uh, a solid foundation. So you will go. In this case, I went in uh, up here. You can see Strapi plugin content manager, controllers content manager.js. I may need uh, parse multi part body, so I may need some uh, functionality up here, specifically from here. And I, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to use that because uh, this is importing it from the plugin, but we are overriding it. So this parse multi part body may actually break our code. But anyway, uh, at the end of the day, what we will do will be we will start from this code and then we will, for example, go in the content manager, controllers, content manager.js, then you can paste in the, 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 the code from the documentation and then you will be able to extend it. So you can extend it any way you want in here. And I think content, uh, no, parse multipart body will probably be from um, strapi.utils. So const uh, curly braces equals require strapi-utils, most likely. If it's not, uh, we're going to get it from somewhere else. But basically, the philosophy or the concept that I want to share is that by simply overriding the same file and the same name of the function, you're going to be able to have your own custom behavior. Uh, let me know if there's any specific custom behavior you want me to build for you or explain to you. There's going to be a bunch of them that come from the Q&A of the course. So make sure to check in the various Q&A or just check in the videos that come after this one in which I show you some common scenarios. Thanks for watching and have a great one.